So I'm going to be talking about pulmonary hypertension, in particular with regard to adult congenital heart disease. How many of you know what pulmonary hypertension, or better, how many of you don't know what pulmonary hypertension is? Okay, quite a few. So hopefully you'll learn something from this today. That's good. All right, so I'm enthusiastic now. So we'll start talking about what is pulmonary hypertension, and then move on to why you should care. Um, then we'll move on to who should be screened and how we go about screening for pulmonary hypertension and then what you should do if you're found to have pulmonary hypertension. So starting off with the basics, defining the problem, pulmonary hypertension, according to your medical textbook, is defined as having a mean pulmonary artery pressure of greater than 25 millimeters of mercury with relatively normal systemic ventricular filling pressures defined as less than 15 millimeters of mercury in a pulmonary vascular resistance of greater than three wood units, which none of you will ever remember. So we are going to be talking predominantly about pulmonary arterial hypertension, World Health Organization Group 1 pulmonary hypertension, which basically means we're talking about high blood pressures in the lungs due to intrinsic problems with the blood vessels in the lungs. And that's the take home message, that there's something wrong with the blood vessels in the lungs that has led you to have high pressures there. Now, <laughs> you may be thinking that this really doesn't apply to you. And that's not an unreasonable belief to have, given that pulmonary hypertension in this category is not exactly common. It's about one in 20, uh, 1 in 30 to 1 in 40,000 people in the general population, but among adult congenital heart disease survivors, it's about 2,000 times more common. And if you have it, it's not exactly a walk in the park. People with pulmonary hypertension have a far decreased exercise tolerance compared to people who do not. If you look at this study from the Great Ormond Street Hospital in uh, Great Britain, where they looked at the exercise tolerance of patients with congenital heart disease separated by their underlying diagnosis. You can see that those with the lowest exercise tolerance are those with Eisenmenger syndrome, which, for those of you who don't know, is basically really bad pulmonary hypertension due to congenital heart disease. And it doesn't just affect exercise tolerance. This is a study from Canada where they looked at congenital heart disease patients with in blue, and I'm sorry, with in red and without in blue pulmonary hypertension, and they basically matched them for age and for lesion. And they found that if you have pulmonary hypertension and congenital heart disease, you have a 40% greater probability of dying over a 15 year period than somebody of your same age and with your same heart defect. So it really makes a big difference. Now, you're probably asking yourselves, well, so how come I got so lucky that I'm an adult congenital heart disease patient and I have, you know, a 2,000-fold increased probability of having this terrible thing? And it's because of what you were born with. Most of you, or many of you, were born with or had a surgeon create for you a certain condition which exposed your lungs to one of two pathologic stimuli, either abnormally increased levels of pulmonary blood flow or exposure of your lung blood vessels to abnormally high pressures. Now these two pathological stimuli are bad for the lungs and the lungs try and protect themselves. They have all of these intrinsic mechanisms to try and protect themselves against the damage that increased blood flow or increased pressure may have. And some of the things they do are they, the muscles and the walls of the blood vessels contract, limiting the amount of blood flowing to that lung and thereby protecting themselves and they start to produce factors which lead to increased numbers of, sorry, smooth muscle cells in the lungs, um, further limiting the amount of blood flow to that lung. Now, over the course of time, as just like when somebody lifts weights, their muscles get bigger and bigger and bigger, these blood vessels, the muscles within them, get bigger and bigger and bigger. And since they can't grow outward, they grow inward. And the channel through which blood flows gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And eventually, the blood, desperate to get through the blood vessel, starts to meander its way through the outside, through the wall of the blood vessel, through abnormal vascular channels, which have abnormal linings, and they're, and they're twisty and turny, and the flow rate is very slow through them, and as a result, they're prone to clotting off. And one by one, the pulmonary blood vessels clot off. Now, you have a million, million blood vessels in your lungs. So this doesn't happen overnight. But over the course of years, with consistent exposure to these pathological stimuli, 
the blood vessels will clot off. And as they clot off one by one, the pressures in your lungs rise. And this eventually leads to pulmonary hypertension. Now, one more bit of good news. Even after you've had a repair of your congenital heart defect, whether it be the a defect exposing your lungs to increased flow or high pressures, you still have a risk of developing pulmonary hypertension, even years later. And so it's important that if you were born with either any of these defects, you get yourself screened. People who have at this or any time in the past had exposure of their lungs to abnormally high blood flow or at the current time or any time in the past had exposure of their lungs to abnormally high pressures need to be screened for pulmonary hypertension. And I'd take it a step further. Given how common pulmonary hypertension is in the adult congenital heart disease community, and given it, how significant it is in terms of quality of life, exercise tolerance, and mortality rate, I think any adult congenital heart disease patients who has symptoms of pulmonary hypertension should be screened. What are the symptoms you should be looking out for? Well, unfortunately, they're somewhat nonspecific. And so your physicians need to have a, thresh, a low threshold for screening you. The symptoms characteristically are increasing shortness of breath when you exert yourself, swelling in your legs, swelling in your belly. You could have chest pain or even passing out episodes. What is the easiest way and the most commonly used way to screen for pulmonary hypertension? Good old fashioned echocardiography. I guarantee you that every single one of you, if you have congenital heart disease, has had at least 10 of these in your lifetime. <laughs> they don't hurt. Just get a little jelly on your chest and it can make a big difference. So what do you do if you're found to have pulmonary hypertension? I mean, is that like the end of the world? No, it's not. There are great therapies now available that can dramatically improve survival. And what you need to do is not only talk to yourself. I mean, self-reflection is always good, but you need to talk with an expert, either an adult congenital heart disease expert, a pediatric cardiologist, or a pulmonary hypertension specialist. Because the heterogeneity of adult congenital heart disease makes it very difficult to say, OK, this is one therapy, and this is the treatment that will apply to all patients. Treatment needs to be individualized based upon your particular lesion, your particular condition. So I can't go through all of the multiple different scenarios that might apply in anybody's given case. But you do need to be seen by a specialist. Now, before you're seen by a specialist, there are certain things you shouldn't do. Do not undergo that tummy tuck or facelift that you've been thinking about having until you've seen, been seen by a specialist. Do not think of enlarging or starting a family until you have been seen by a pulmonary hypertension specialist. And do not start taking up like ultra marathoning or Ironman if you've been thinking of those things. Just wait. You may be able to do those things. Either you may, it may be that, that it was a false positive it, and that you don't have pulmonary hypertension. It may be that once you get on appropriate therapy, you can do these things. But until you're seen by a specialist, you should refrain from those things because they could be potentially dangerous. So to conclude, pulmonary hypertension is common in adult congenital heart disease. And it does have an effect on your quality of life as well as on prognosis. Certain adult congenital heart disease patients are prone to developing pulmonary hypertension and need to be screened. And if you do find that you have pulmonary hypertension, you need to be seen by a specialist. And with that, I will conclude and open up for questions. Great. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Stevens. get this micro. Oh, awesome. Okay, so uh, any questions from the audience? If you have a question, please go ahead and come up to the microphone so we can actually hear you. Anybody have any questions? All right, we'll let you guys warm up a little bit. So, so, so Ari, so I guess the question is then, um, once we do the echocardiogram, um, what do we do with that information? And how do we proceed from there to really get a sense of whether or not we really truly have pulmonary hypertension? So that's a good question. That's, you're kind of asking, OK, looks like you may have pulmonary hypertension based on echo. What's going to happen to me next? And I think that what you expect is you're going to be referred to have a cardiac catheterization, which I will suspect a lot of you have also had in the past. Um, and what they're going to do at the, at the time of cardiac catheterization is directly check the blood pressures in your lungs and in your heart. 
to determine what type of pulmonary hypertension you have and what may be the underlying cause of that pulmonary hypertension. And that's really at the kind of the next step in defining how to individualize care for you. Yeah. Let me go ahead and repeat the question. So, so when you get the echocardiogram, what exactly makes you feel like you need to look for pulmonary hypertension? That's a great question. So we can actually tell, based on certain parameters on the echocardiogram, if a patient has pulmonary hypertension. We can, in fact, get an idea of exactly what their pulmonary blood pressures are based on the echocardiogram. Now, we can't tell everything about the pulmonary hypertension, but we can tell kind of like... You can tell if they have evidence of it or not, and that's the reason why we have to do that additional step of the catheterization to define it further. But it's an excellent screening test. It's, it's very unlikely that somebody with a completely normal echocardiogram will not have pulmonary, uh, will have pulmonary hypertension. Whereas if you have an abnormal echocardiogram, you still may not have pulmonary hypertension, but there's a good chance that you will. Absolutely. So what we do is we put a big IV into one of the veins in your body, and all the veins you end up going back to your heart sometime or another, and we thread a catheter, which is basically nothing more than a big floppy straw, through the, the vein, and we kind of thread it back towards your heart, into your heart, and snake it out into your lungs. And then we attach a transducer, which is basically a little, a little device that checks the pressure in the column of water. And since the tip of this straw is out in your lungs, we know we can directly check the pressures at the tip of that column of water outside the body at the other end of the catheter, the other end of the straw. Um, and we, it's, it's, it's uh, I mean, that's basically the way it's done. You just, and you just, you can tell how high the pressures are using, using that. How long does that How long does it take? Yeah, no, I mean, it, uh, yeah, no, no, it actually goes pretty quick. I think, you know, on average, it takes about, the procedure itself probably takes 15 minutes. All the prep and stuff probably takes, you know, an hour. Yeah, that's the time-consuming part. So yeah. Actually, we have a question over there in the corner. Oh, oh yeah, sure. So, who treats I don't think so. Who would you see The specialist, would you see your cardiologist? Would you move on to a different type of physician? So that, that's a good question. Um, I think that most uh, adult congenital providers are comfortable treating at least s some forms of pulmonary hypertension. And so you're, if you have an adult congenital or a pediatric uh, uh, congenital heart disease provider, that would be the first person to go to. If their comfort level is not, if they're not comfortable enough to manage the pulmonary hypertension, they may then refer you on to a pulmonary hypertension specialist for, for further care. Uh, my sister died of um, uh, ACDH, <laughs> uh, adult congenital heart disease, and um, I just want to know if this is like a genetic, uh, and because my father died of heart attack and my mother died of stroke, and I myself have always had a high blood pressure and really high cholesterol, so I really wonder, if, do I need to have a checkup for for pulmonary hypertension? Um, so that, so it sounds like you have a family history of both congenital heart disease as well as what's, what we call acquired heart disease or coronary artery disease. And, and probably the high cholesterol and high blood pressure that you have, the other family members who've had coronary artery disease had that too, and that contributed to, to that disease. Um, though, if you don't, if you yourself don't have congenital heart disease, I don't know that you would be at any, your risk would be more similar to that general population than to the adult congenital heart disease population. Sure. Right. So I think we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and keep moving because we have a lot to talk about today. Oh, I'm sorry. One more question. Oh, it would be quick. I just had a question. Sure. Um, what type of treatment options are available? 
So that's a very good question. There are medicines that we have that are that directly target the the blood vessels in the lungs. Um, they're analogous to blood pressure medicine that you take when you have high blood pressure, except for that they are for high blood pressure in the lungs. And they're pills. Um, there are also, for more advanced cases, intravenous therapies that can be used. Ultimately, if the pulmonary hypertension is severe enough, it can lead to a need for lung transplantation.